Hello, and welcome back. It has been a while. I am still in the process of getting ready to head off to Thailand. But I got a little gift from David Tipton in Australia. This showed up the other day along with an Aussie survival kit. And these I can highly recommend. These are delicious. Uh, didn't take me but a couple days to get through those. And today I was at the grocery store and lo and behold, what did I spot <laughs> but these in the cookie aisle. And I typically stay away from the cookie aisle because of my expanding equator. But there they were. So I had never seen them or spotted them before. So thank you to David for turning me on to, uh, to these. He also included a staple of Australians. Jury is out on this, David. <laughs> it's interesting to say the least. I cannot quite describe the smell. And my first impression of the taste is it's reminiscent of burnt tires or burning tires but I am going to give this a shot he said to spread it thinly on toast so I've got to pick up some bread I typically don't keep bread in the house because I don't need the extra carbs but I'll pick up a small loaf of bread and toast it up and try uh, putting some of this on it he said bread and butter and some of this uh, like many things in life you know I used to hate beets but I love them now there's a lot of things as you acquire the taste for them uh, there's many foods in Thailand that at first glance a lot of people don't like but after they've had it two or three times they can't live without it so we're gonna give it a go David we're not we're not gonna give up on it and he also sent along this nice little Chrysler radio not Chrysler like our cars, but Chrysler, K-R-I-E-S-L-E-R. -E -E and ever since he repaired one of these on his videos, I've been intrigued. The cabinet is in good condition. Uh, it needs some cleaning. There's what looks like could be soldering iron burns on the top here a little bit, but they're not very deep. I can probably uh, sand that out and then use one of those headlight restoration kits to bring the, the buff uh, the uh, polish back the buff the polish back. I do have all the knobs and also sent along a volume control or potentiometer so I'm assuming either the well it must be for the volume uh, that would be my guess and that looks like it's been broken off at some point. The knob is here I have all those parts the lens here should clean up if I go over that with one of those headlight polishing kits it should clean right up it's a good heavy plastic so that can be handled with ease and it's got all of those wonderful exotic sounding at least to us here in the US places on it uh, Western Australia Queensland Victoria New South Wales uh, or no, that's Southern Australia on this side. SA, Southern Australia, that's Western Australia. Queensland, uh, Victoria, New South Wales, and Tasmania. And Tasmania al always uh, drums up images of the exotic. Um, we'll have to replace the grill cloth. It looks like something moths or something have gotten to that, but that's fine. The little badge here looks like to be made out of brass, and I think that'll clean up nicely. There's two versions of this. Uh, one with only an aerial wire, and another one with the ferrite loop antenna inside. This one contains both. It's got the Australian plug on it, which why am I getting a blinking battery light? I shouldn't be getting a blinking battery light. Oh, I gotta plug this part in. Hang on a second while I plug in an external power supply. Okay, we have external power on the camera now. We should be all set. Uh, hopefully it's not producing a lot of hum. 
sometimes does. It's got the uh, Australian plug on it and I have ordered an outlet, a dual outlet to handle this uh, because we do have 240 here in the house and we'll wire this up so that uh, we can keep it original 240 volt plug from Australia. The uh, bad news is when I got this radio and through no fault of David's whatsoever when I got this radio I heard something rolling around inside it was very well packed but it must have had some extremely rough handling on the way here and I heard some rattling inside and found the loop of the ferrite antenna floating around and the ferrite rod in three pieces floating around inside the, the, the chassis here of the radio and sadly it took out two of the valves aka tubes the EL90 which is a 6AQ5 I had a 6AQ5 I dropped one in it it also took out the 6N8 it just took the very tip of that one off and as you can see it let the vacuum leak away so that tube is gone I have a substitute ordered and on the way should be here in a day or two sadly mine won't say made in Australia like all of the other tubes did um, Tipagon, Tipagon I don't know if this is a made in Australia tube or not but all of the others appear to be original to the set and say made in Australia on them but the tube I have coming is uh, I forget the European designation but it's a 6N8 equivalent and we'll plug that in we'll have that and keeping with tradition Dave was kind enough to ship me all of the Australian dust that was in here now he had a receiver that came in from uh, Great Britain or the UK and uh, he said he was returning his dust back to the UK, but I think I have a better plan for this. I think I'll gather all of this up, David, put it in an envelope, and ship it off to Beijing. And that way they will have a legitimate excuse to blame the United States for the great pandemic. Uh, they've blamed every other country on the planet. They've blamed seafood and imported car parts and imported electronics parts but by giving them an envelope full of dust it'll give them a legitimate reason to blame me for the uh, for the pandemic worldwide and I can have my door knocked down and people can stop picking on them in Beijing I figured that's the least I can do for them but we'll pull this out clean it up I heard something else rattling around in here it's probably the remains of the glass from this valve from the 6AQ5 slash EL90 I can't imagine how rough they must have handled this because the packaging was in pretty good shape when it got here uh, the cabinets obviously in good shape and to be fair these are extremely fragile uh, it doesn't take much of a shock to break these so what my plan is with that well I'll show you what I'm going to do with that <clears throat> I have an aluminum channel here and I'm going to lay the pieces in here so that they're as straight as I can get them bearing in mind that these ferrite rods are never truly straight they are always warped to some degree but I'll use that as a guide and do the best I can to and that doesn't appear to be the piece that broke off of there that's an end and that's an end so this must be uh, 
Okay, I think this goes over here. Yes, that matches there. I'll match up the brakes and we will use some uh, cyanoacrylic, aka super glue, cyanoacrylic, cyanoacrylic, I believe is the correct pronunciation. We'll glue that back together and reinstall the ferrite antenna and we'll drop some uh, either some wax or a little bit of hot melt glue on the windings where they got uh, moved around. So I think I'm going to do this first. I'll uh, make the repair to the antenna, put that back together, and then we'll remove this from the chassis, or the cabinet rather, the chassis from the cabinet, and see if we can uh, find out what else is rattling around okay, in here. We have the uh, chassis pulled out of the cabinet here. That was a bit of a puzzle to get it out. It's got to be drawn back, tipped forward, and then rotated slightly to get it around. But we got it out of there. Let's see what we've got. I do see some pieces of the 6A Q5. That's what I heard rattling around inside of the cabinet cabinet appears to be in real good shape. I did find one small piece of plastic of unknown origin, but I can't see anything broken anywhere. So I have no idea where this came from. The front of the cabinet wasn't broken anywhere and nowhere that I can find. This obviously came from somewhere, but uh, it certainly isn't staring me in the face wherever it came from. It's not from the front. All the grill work is intact. So I just don't know. But we'll hang on to it in case we discover where it was missing from, but I don't think it's any major problem at all. Lovely Australian dust. The dial cord appears to be intact. Let me turn it around and see what we're dealing with here. This is my first discovery. Aha! They're little critters. I can see a chrysalis or something of that ilk. A little bit of dust in here. But there's a chunk of the speaker missing, which seems to be a common thing uh, when radios are kept in warmish climates, damp, humid climates like Australia. They seem to have a lot. I've seen a lot of videos where the speakers have been eaten away, and even in southern United States, there appears to be critters that like to eat speaker cones. But the speaker appears to be otherwise in good condition. The voice coil is not dragging, so that's a plus. There's an interesting hood here for the dial lamps to reflect the light down over the face of the. Uh, the dial itself. Yeah, I think this is going to clean up nicely, very nicely. And indeed, we have an intact dial string. It's stiff as the Dickens, but a little bit of cleaning and lubrication should fix that up without a problem. Now, what's underneath? Aha! Lots of nice wax, waxy paper caps. What I'm going to assume is the oscillator coil. I haven't looked at the schematic yet. Uh, filter capacitor that is leaking, so that'll have to be changed right away. It's spewing its insides out over here. Mm, to be expected. So we got one, two, three, four, Five waxy paper caps that I can see. We count that one, two, three, four. Yeah, only five. I'm assuming these are mica, but they could be molded paper. We'll test them and find out. I'm not familiar with a lot of the. We have a trimmer coil here for the oscillator. This is probably one of those sets where they wind or unwind. I'll look at the documentation here in a minute. 
so that we're not just guessing. And these capacitors here, I don't, I'm not familiar with this type. I don't know if they're, they, they look like a poly cap, but I think this might be a little bit too early for poly capacitors, but who knows. I know very little about Chrysler, and I know very little, of well, all. I know next to nothing about Australian uh, manufacturers, what they use for parts. This is my very first. I guess you could say I'm a virgin. So we'll get the dust cleaned up. We'll give the schematic a good going over. I am waiting for my outlets to show up and waiting for my 6 and 8 to show up. So and until those parts come in, this will probably pretty much be the end of this video. I'm going to find out which one's the coupling cap for this, change it out, and before we go too far into working on this, we'll make sure that it's that it is operational so that if it's not working after I recap it, we know it's my fault and not some hidden fault that was there before. I always like to, you know, I'll do the filter cap, the coupling cap to the audio tube, a couple of quick checks, and then test the thing and make sure it is functional. Because there's nothing worse than just going in blindly, recapping a set, turning it on, and it doesn't work, and you go, oh, did it work before I got in there? We all have brain cramps, and uh, I've had people write in the comments, oh, you're an idiot, just go in and recap them. Yeah, I'm an idiot, but I'm an idiot with a plan. So, let me go get this cleaned up, and we'll see where it takes us. And I hope we're in frame here. Yeah, we are. Okay. <coughs> we will uh, clean it up and see where we stand. And in the process of cleaning this out, I will be hoovering it. Now, in the U.S., they would say I'm going to vacuum it. In the UK, and I believe in Australia, they call it hoovering. And I am actually using a genuine hoover. So, since I'm working on an Australian radio, one has to use the proper tools. Okay, we've emptied the hoover bag in here. And uh, we'll get this sent off to our favorite presentator, a.k.a. President Dictator, Xi Jinping. And he'll have one pandemic kit and he'll be able to legitimately blame the United States and convince the WHO that he was right all along and we caused it so we'll make sure we get this off in the mail tomorrow morning or in the post as you would say over there just to make sure that uh, we'll have to put about a hundred stamps over here of course and just make sure this gets to our friend and we have our antenna repaired our cyano acrylic is holding up nicely. The ferrite rods in one piece. I've re-glued the coil onto the um, form. I used this UV curing adhesive. This stuff is great. You just put a few dabs where you want it, flip the thing over, it's got a little UV light, well near UV light. A true UV LED wouldn't be plastic but uh, they're near UV and just about as soon as you hit it with the near UV light it cures, holds everything in place. I mean literally by the time you turn it on, make a couple of passes around it, it has set up. It's wonderful stuff to use. It's not cheap. I found it very helpful when I'm putting dial cords together because often you're trying, you need six hands to try to get everything tied and I'll put a simple slip knot, pull it to where I want it, put a drop of adhesive, hit it with the UV light, and then I'm free to tie my knots at my leisure. It just makes it so simple to put dial cords on. You know, you, you attach the dial cord, pull it where you want it, make a single loop knot, and with the little cover off here, you just put a drop of glue, hit the UV light, it's fixed, and then you can make fancy knots and do whatever you want. I just find it a, a simple, very simple way. And I'll be doing that on here. It appears somebody restrung this because this dial cord looks quite new. Or, you know, within, but it doesn't travel the full length. 
it binds up. I think they put one too many. Hmm. Yeah, if they put one too many turns, I think, because it piles up on top of itself and won't. You can see, and I don't know if you can see in there or not, but it's all piled up on top of itself and it won't go down to the other end. works that direction but going in this direction it's already overrun itself and that's it it's bound up it won't go down to the end so I think there's one too many turns I'm gonna check the documentation and see how many turns they want around the shaft but it, either that or the dial cord is simply too thick I've had that happen before too sometimes I have a very thin string and if you put a heavier one on it will bind up at the end of travel <clears throat> but oh, that time it made it all the way down but will it make it all the way back this way no nope, binding up yeah it's bound up going the other direction now so we'll play with that a little bit and get it straightened out hopefully in a day or two the valves will be here my replacement or a valve my replacement valve will arrive and I'll be able to uh, continue with this video something I found here attention to detail these mounting brackets for the antenna are fastened to the chassis with a screw and then they soldered them as well and they did the same on this end and typically they would do that so that if there's any movement any vibration if this developed you know any corrosion in here you could start getting static and noise because of the interaction between these two pieces so they put a little bit of solder on there and just ensured that it's bonded to the chassis and there won't be any electrical noise from any motion that occurs. The little critters that uh, ate the grill cloth and the speaker also got at the output transformer here, the audio output transformer. I don't see any windings. I don't think it did any damage. I'm not at all concerned. That should be fine. We had what I initially thought was a date code over here on the transformer, 18-98. And I said, wow, that seems like it's, you know, 98 seems pretty late for this. But over here on the IF transformer, 5 May of 1965, that's more likely the date for this radio is 1965. By 98, most sets were starting to go over to solid state. So, I believe 65 is the correct vintage for this set. If I find any more date codes, I'll let you know. But I looked on the capacitors, I didn't see any date codes. Well, there's a yeah, high seal 85, I think that's a name because they all say that. There's no date code on the electrolytic. So, I'm, I'm going to go with 1965. This was manufactured thereabouts. Okay, until I get the uh, replacement for the 6 and 8, I'm kind of dead in the water. Oh, and one more thing. The brackets for this ferrite antenna were at a position where when the ferrite was installed, it was barely slipped into either grommet on either end. I don't think it was rough handling per se. I think it was the fact that this was barely, barely inside the uh, grommets. And just tipping it over during handling was enough to make it slide out and then start flopping around inside the radio. So it's not a packaging issue, and I don't think it was badly handled. I think it's just a matter of the brackets. There's This was actually upright and when I slip that end in, you see the other end falls out just as I start to enter over here. So whatever friction was on the two grommets on the end just wasn't enough. I've bent this one over slightly. This one's soldered on. I may take the screw out and break it loose and bend that one back a little bit so that these fit a little bit further in and then I'll put a drop of adhesive on each end and re-solder the uh, brackets of the chassis because that 
that is just going to continue. Oh, actually, that might be in enough now. It's sticking out a little bit on each end. If I put a drop of adhesive on each end of that UV cure adhesive and just fix that in position, we should be in good shape. But I can't, there's, that's nobody's fault. That Just a manufacturing thing. It was barely, barely, barely holding the, the ferrite rod. And just handling it, it would, it would be enough to slip out fall in and of course in the process of moving it from one vehicle to another during shipping it just began to float around inside the cabinet so nobody really at fault there it's just one of those things as they say doo doo occurs and I'm doing the cure on the last drop of adhesive here and now that is firmly firmly held in place that's not going anywhere you can see it's moving the brackets on each end a little drop of adhesive, a little bit of near UV light, and that problem is solved. That thing will never come out of there again unless you want it to. You can break the stuff loose if you want to, but you can hear that's already hardened up just from that quick application of near UV light. That, is he that adhesive is cured, and that is fixed in place. Just very, very handy stuff. Would uh, super glue work there? Possibly. But, and, and I certainly use super glue here because you have to have, you, the light has to be able to penetrate. It would not have worked for this repair. This I use the CA on. But on here and on the ends, I use the UV cure adhesive simply because you can put a drop, put the light, you're done. You don't have to try to make sure you get between bonding surfaces. It'll bond to the exterior. And by the way, I've used this to replace uh, that UV adhesive. If you have to put a glass, a dial glass, into a radio in the bracket, you know, the little tabs in the bracket are broken, a couple of drops on each corner of that UV cure, hit it with the light, boom, it's fixed in place and you're good to go. I've just, I keep finding more and more and more uses for that stuff. It just is such a handy product to have. Uh, where CA, if it was a plastic dial, you got to be careful with, with CA. It will fog a lot of plastics and cause problems. But this stuff doesn't eat plastic. It doesn't seem to have any, any issues except, like I say, if you, you can't use it to fix something like this because this has to, you know, the light has to penetrate and it won't penetrate between these two. But where you have an exposed surface, it's the berries. It works like a champ. Not a sponsor, just a good product. And since I'm waiting on parts, I figured I might as well start cleaning up the cabinet. This Chrysler badge is going to clean up beautifully. Uh, there was something sticky and gooey on it, but it's coming off with relative ease and showing a nice finish underneath. It's going to be in nice condition. The biggest problem is I don't know what this is made out of. It's some kind of metal. But it is as soft as cheese. Uh, just polishing this I had started to bend, I mean gently polishing it. The, the wings were bending on the badge here. And these, if you just look at them sideways, they bend. I don't know if this is pure aluminum plated. I don't know. Uh, whatever this is made out of, is, it is extremely, extremely soft. But it's in very good condition uh, cosmetically. It's going to clean up nicely. There's a little bit more there. It just comes off with a little bit of work on the fingernail and then a clean rag polishes it right up. So that's going to be uh, nice. I'll have to come up with a new piece of grill cloth for it. And I was thinking that this originally was white, but when I looked inside, there's no evidence of it ever being white. It looks like it was always kind of a cream colored. I was thinking of trying the hydrogen peroxide trick on this, and, but we're running out of sunlight here in New England rapidly. Uh, this time of year, the sun gets pretty, starts getting pretty low. But I pulled out the documentation in this was available in chameleon ivory, charcoal pink, mocha ivory, and burgundy ivory. So this always had an ivory look to it, which means I'm just going to put a good 
polish on it. But first of all, clean it up well, then polish it up and put a good coat, hard coat of wax on it, and it should look just fine. The uh, dial face here, the inside is scratch free, the outside cleaned up once the dirt was off of it. And it shows wear, of course, from over the years, people turning the knobs, it, it's dulled it up a little bit. But I'll go over that with uh, some plastic polish and buff that back. When I do the cabinet, I'll just buff this right along with it. And I think that's going to look absolutely fine. It's going to clean up very nicely. I'm kind of looking forward to getting this going. Uh, I've got a place out in my workshop, out in the garage where I spend a lot of time in the summers. I have 220 available right there by that shelf where I'm thinking of putting this. And out there in the garage I don't have a lot of wall warts or, or stuff generating RF noise so it'll be a nice electrically quiet environment to listen to this while I'm out there working. This will take a place of honor. The only thing I'm worrying about at this point is the gold on the Chrysler but I had some pretty good success dabbing color onto the uh, the Heath kit if you remember and that came out pretty nice I made myself a little stamp and transferred some paint so if I mask all of this off around the edges and dab a little bit of gold paint on there I think we can clean up that section as well in fact Not Heath get Holocrafters, the Holocrafters. You can see the precision built and the Holocrafters came out very nice on this radio. Uh, cleaned right up. Those had absolutely, well, the, the precision built had no, little to no paint left on it. And the Holocrafters was in rough shape, but I made a self, myself a little stamp, transferred some paint on, and those came out all right. So I suspect I can do the same with the Chrysler on the front of the radio and those will come out okay. While we're waiting for parts, I think I'll get started on some of the cabinet work here. Yeah, probably need more light. There we go. The paper that's on the bottom, the data plate, nomenclature plate, whatever you want to call it, paper, is extremely fragile splitting and starting to lift so we're going to inject some adhesive underneath here and uh, hopefully stabilize it uh, paper towel. and hopefully in another 60 years or 57 years whatever it's been since this was manufactured This will still be intact and usable. I'm using my old syringe trick here. And when we've done this, I'll put some semi gloss clear lacquer over the top. And I started working on the knobs and was cleaning one up with a toothbrush these little pieces are on the front and it was becoming quite a chore but as I was working on it with the toothbrush that fell off revealing that it's made in one two and the third pieces some kind of brass material because it's the same color on both sides which means I'll be able to clean these up and these will return back to like new condition they're pretty grungy. Uh, the toothbrush actually wasn't taking anything off. What I should probably do is polish this piece up and give it a coat of clear lacquer so that it won't tarnish again. It may have had clear lacquer on it at one time and that may be the residue that I'm seeing on here that's so tough to get off. I'll try a little lacquer thinner on just the metal the process of cleaning up these inserts for the knobs and what I'm doing is spinning them in my drill is real high speed. This is one of those brushless motors. I don't know what was on these. Lacquer thinner didn't touch it. Um, 
acetone didn't touch it. I had to go after them with four rot steel wool. And I think they're, I thought they were brass. I don't think they are. They're not, they're turning quite silver. It's not steel. Uh, it's heavier than aluminum. So I don't know if they were stamped out of stainless and some kind of spray put on them. I went online and looked for uh, tinted clear lacquer and the stuff I found that would have been the right color they want. $45 a can, so <laughs> that's not going to happen. I am going to polish these up and by the way the knobs come up beautifully. It takes all the scratches and the fingerprints off. I'm using again my Noxon number 7. And we're going to polish these up. Uh, I don't know what's on them. I know things in Australia are tough. It appears even the grunge is tough. Don't mess with an Aussie. <laughs> uh, but we're going to get a good shine on these. We'll at least give them a coat of clear lacquer. And uh, see how they look. If they look okay, then we'll leave them that way. If not, I'll find some way to put some tint on here. But for now, I'm just going to get them shiny. <laughs> 